so this year y'all have a purple worksheet where we're asking you to review some factoring concepts and on the I think the back of that worksheet yep there's a not colored picture but a black and white picture of um, this factoring flowchart so keep going back and referencing that if you get stuck but this is technically a review of algebra 2 or honors algebra 2 factoring so let's see what we remember now you're gonna be asked to do this entire assignment so I think what I'll do is I'll do a few of them of each type and then I'll let you kind of suffer through the rest if you, if you don't mind all right so at the top of the flowchart if I flip back to that you always start at the top of any flowchart that you see um, but we're gonna look for any common terms once we have a common term factored out then you change your approach whether it's a two term or three term or a four term so mm -hmm. When I look at number one here, I notice there is a common factor that we could take out of both a 9x squared and a 6x. I could take a 3x out of both those terms. So back in Algebra 2, we used to call this undistributing, but we're factoring out a 3x. And think about what's left when you divide both of these by a 3x. Um, we still have a 3x minus 2. And of course, these are the ones where you could redistribute it to double check that you haven't done anything weird. And this is a case where when you factor out the common term, that is all the factoring you can do in that example. So you're done. But when I look at number three, we're still going to factor out the common term. Um, there's no numerical common term here, I don't think, but there is a common term of x that we could take out. So when you remove or factor out an x, you have still a 4x squared minus 81. And this is one of those multiple layer factoring questions where you're not done because this two term binomial follows the pattern for difference of two squares. When you have a subtraction of two things that can be square rooted, you factor it into a plus b times a minus b. So going back to our example here, um, if this is a squared and this is b squared and I think backwards and I square root each of them, the x stays in front, but then for the rest of the factoring pattern, it will be square root of this, so 2x, and then square root of this is 9, and then one's a plus 9, and one's a minus 9. It's my favorite factoring pattern. I love it. Um, number, oh boy, let's see. Let's look at number 2. This is just, uh, I don't think it's a common term here at all. This is a straight factoring question, like a trinomial. So reverse foiling is a way to think about it. The first two terms multiplied together produce a 7n squared. Outer plus inner, the arches of the distribution, give you a negative 23n. And then the last two numbers multiplied together give you 18. Now, some teachers teach slide and divide. I'd like you to step away from the slide and divide. <laughs> um, it gets a little tedious, and you need to have a little better number sense, I guess, as we go into these harder factoring questions. But when I look at my first two terms, needing to multiply to 7n squared, that's a prime number, so it has to be 7n and 1n. So I know for certain that's right. I'm going to jump to the end of the problem real fast, and I know my last two terms have to multiply to 18. So I do have a few options to consider, 9 and 2, 6 and 3, uh, 18 and 1, of course. And then I know that they have to have the same sign, but looking at the middle term needing to add up to negative 23, that tells me that both my numbers have to be negative. So essentially it's a guess. Um, 18 and 1 seems like a terrible guess. We know that numbers that are really severely far away from each other like that aren't generally the right answer for factoring. Um, maybe we just flat out guess between 9 and 2 and 6 and 3. Or maybe you have a little instinct in you that says, okay, I'm pretty sure I need to go to this one. And to be honest, guys, I really don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with 9 and 2 just because it's the next one in the list. And I'm going to throw, I wouldn't put a 9 here because that's going to give me a 63, way too big. So what if I put the 9 here and the 2 here? Let's see. Let's see how that works out. It's a negative 14 and a negative 19. That adds up to negative 23. So good guess in a bruzo. I'll be honest, guys. That wasn't like 100% of a guess. It's like an educated guess. So, All right, I'll let you suffer through number 4 on your own. Whoops. Hello. And I do expect to see a little bit of work, especially some of these are multi-step factoring. So if you just copy the answer off the back, guys, I'm going to know what you did. So don't be that kid. All right, let's take a look at, um, oh, I don't know. How about number five? So I'm pretty sure there's a common factor there. Um, I don't have a calculator in front of me, but uh, let's see. Maybe a four. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are all divisible by four. So if I take a four out. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> oh boy. All right, hold on. I'm going to grab a calculator. All right, excellent. Okay, so I knew the first term. That one wasn't my issue. That is a 5b squared. 
And then 136 divided by 4, I just found out, is a 34, so that's a 34B. Oh boy, that's ugly. And then plus, oh, what would that be 45, right? Let's double check that. Yeah, 45. Okay, so that's our first step in factoring from the flowchart. But now that red thing I just wrote down is still a trinomial, which means we can reverse FOIL factor that. So remember, this is first, this is outer plus inner, and this is last. And yeah, we might have to take some guesses. The 4 remains in front, separate from this trinomial factoring. Um, let's talk about 5b squared. Well, that's got to be a 5b and a 1b. And then when we get to the 45, um, I'm feeling 9 and 5, but like there's always 15 and 3 and 45 and 1 technically. Uh, I'm feeling very strongly that it's 9 and 5, so let's find out. I know not to put a 5 here, though, because that would have a common factor of 5 in that term. So if I'm going to put 5 anywhere, I'm going to be placing 5 back here and a 9 here. And my signs have to be both negative, so let's see if this works out. We have negative 25 plus negative 9, which is negative 34. All right, so a little bit of educated guessing and also some strategy. Knowing not to put the 5s together is a strategy. So back in the day when you were first learning this in algebra, sometimes it just felt like magic, like your teacher would just come up with the answers, but you guys develop some really cool skills as you progress through it. Um, let's take a look at number 9. There's no common factors here, but I do recognize that this is a binomial, which means it's one of my patterns. So the binomials, if it has a plus sign in the middle, it's a sum of cubes. So it's two things that are being that could be cube rooted, and then we're going to factor it into this pattern here. So when I have my students do this pattern, once you recognize the pattern, I suggest you write it down, because you will have to have that memorized at some point in your life. So this is a plus b, the factoring part of it. So a squared minus ab plus b squared. And then once you know who a and b are, this will be a really easy question. So like for instance this, if you cube root that, the cube root of 125x to the third is 5x. And then here, if you cube root this, that would be 2. So plugging 5x for all the a's and 2 for all the b's, my factoring pattern comes out to 5x plus 2. And I like the cubic patterns because you don't have to worry about signs. They're already built in. Now, careful here. 5x squared is like 5x times another 5x. So that is a 25x squared. Make sure you square the coefficient as well. Minus a times b, multiply them together, 10x, and then b squared. So plus 4. The other reason I love the factoring patterns for the cubics is once you place them into that pattern, there's never any chance of further factoring. So you don't have to worry about it's one of those sneaky questions where you got to factor again. Um, let's try, uh, number 10 is also a cubic pattern, but this time it's the difference of two cubes. So when we go to the pattern, we are going to be using this time the a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So remember, the sign is built into the pattern. You don't have to do any work for that. But if I cube root that first term, I get 2x for a. And then if I cube root this number, this last term, I get 3 for b. So placing all the numbers where they belong, you end up with, where are we at? Okay, 2x minus 3. And then again, a squared would be 2x times another 2x. So that's 4x squared. And then multiply them together. So plus 6x, and then plus b squared, so plus 9. Love that factoring pattern. Nice and easy to use once you know how to use it. All right, I think there's probably some factor by group in at the bottom here. Oh, yeah. So when you have four terms, and there's not a single common factor to take out of everybody, you're forced to what's called factor by grouping. So typically we group the first two together, but you could rearrange the terms if you saw a need for that. And in the first group, you take out a common factor. I'm thinking a 5p squared. And when you remove or factor out a 5p squared from here and here, you're still left with p plus 8. Now the trick to factoring by grouping is that you have to factor something out of every group, including a sign. So here I'm going to factor out a positive 2. So I'm literally going to write positive 2. And then the idea is the parentheses should match. So p plus 8 should match this parenthesis p plus 8. Let's see, if I factor it out a 2 from here and here, I do get indeed p plus 8. And that's how you knew if you were doing this right. So now I look at this entire polynomial. This is my first term, and this is my second term. They have a common term of p plus 8 that I can take out. So factoring the p plus 8 out in front of the entire problem leaves me with k 
Okay, think about what's left here when you remove this p plus 8 and this p plus 8. We still have 5p squared plus 2. So that's a really cool technique of factoring out, and it's a little more elaborate uh, than just our traditional factoring out a monomial, because we're factoring out an entire term, um, so it looks really complicated, but it's kind of cool how it works out. Okay, I think that's enough of a review of uh, factoring. If you're really still stuck, maybe go back and revisit my Algebra 2 lesson on advanced factoring. I think that's the title of it, like advanced factoring. <laughs> um, and you'll get some more examples of this crazy factoring where you got to do all sorts of steps and follow the flowchart.